The intent of this video is to discuss the B-29 Bombardier Station exterior features, interior compartment, and address the station's combat effectiveness in air-to-air -air combat. This image shows the various B-29 bombers crew positions. The B-29 bombers forward compartment is occupied by six crew members. This includes the pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer, radio operator, navigator, and bombardier slash gunner. As a bombardier, he will be responsible for releasing the plane's bombs. As a gunner, he will be responsible for operating the forward-facing defensive armament against Japanese interceptors attacking head-on. This chart shows the various sections of the B-29 bomber. The bombardier's crew station is in the aircraft section 41, the forward pressurized cabin. This view shows interior components and features of Section 41. The bombardier seat is in the plane's greenhouse structure just forward of the pilot co-pilot stations. The greenhouse is the Section 41's framed plexiglass and tempered glass enclosure. None of the greenhouse transparency panes are ballistic. The B-29 bombers were pressurized, heated, and insulated. The B-29's pressurized compartments are shown here. The cabin's differential pressure level is set to an 8,000 foot cabin altitude. This is the same cabin altitude pressure level as a modern commercial airliner. If hostile action is anticipated, the bomber will depressurize to minimize a catastrophic pressure vessel rupture. The crew members will don their oxygen mask when depressurized at altitudes above 10,000 feet. Let's take a look at some of the outside features of the B-29 bomber's nose section. The fuselage is fabricated as a stress skin semi-monocoque construction where the skin is the main load bearing component and the internal stringers and frames help share and distribute the loads. This view shows section 41 airframe components. The internal stringers are identified in this view. The internal frames are identified in this view. The 218 pressure bulkhead is shaded in this view. This chart shows the skin gauge thicknesses of the B-29 bomber. All of the Section 41 skin panels are either 040 or 051 inch thick clad aluminum sheet. The B-3 drift meter port is shown here. The drift meter is an instrument used by the bomber's navigator to measure both the plane's drift due to crosswind and ground speed. See the World War II U.S. Bomber Channel's B-17 bomber's drift meter video for more detailed information. This is a forward lower turret. All B-29's upper and lower turrets adopted the Browning AN-M2 50 caliber machine guns. The turrets also have spent ammo chutes to discard the cartridge casings and links. The hole between the barrels is the turret's camera port. The bombardier has primary control of the lower forward turret. The side blister gunners have secondary control over the forward lower turret. A drawing of the turret is shown here. The upper turret houses four machine guns. The bombardier has primary control of the upper forward turret. The central fire control gunner has secondary control of the forward upper turret. The two small circular patches are the plane's static pressure inlets. You can see multiple small inlet holes at the center of these patches. These are the plane's pitot tubes. The plane's pitot tubes will provide a stagnation pressure. The difference between the static and stagnation pressure will be used to determine the plane's airspeed. This chart shows a schematic of the pitot-static pressure system. The pressure data will be provided to the B-29 bombardier's instrument panel's indicated airspeed and altimeter. The plane's nose gear retracts into the gear's wheel well cavity. The nose gear is non-steerable. The pilot will steer the bomber on the ground by differential braking or differential thrust. The gear shimmy damper, toe fitting, and torsion links are shown here. The nose gear doors have been removed from this B-29. This part is the Identify Friend or Foe, or IFF, antenna. On other B-29s, this antenna is located aft of the bomb bay, as shown in this image. The Section 41's forward plexiglass and tempered glass greenhouse is shown in this clip. The greenhouse transparencies provide the bombardier an excellent field of view when sighting on a bomb run or tracking an enemy aircraft. The B-29's upper forward turret has an arc travel of 90 degrees up and 5 degrees down. The turrets can spin an azimuth 360 degrees in 8 seconds and traverse full elevation in 3 seconds. The B-29's lower forward turret has an arc travel of 5 degrees up and 90 degrees down. The upper 
and lower turrets will converge their bullet streams at 200 yards or farther for head-on level attacks. Once inside the B-29, the crew members will close the nose wheel floor hatch. Moving forward past the flight engineer station on the right, you can clearly see George Lucas's inspiration for the Star Wars Millennium Falcon's flight deck configuration. This image shows the locations of the B-29 crew and systems armor. The pilot and co-pilot seatbacks are armored. The seatbacks are fabricated from a quarter inch rolled armor plate. The bombardier station has no armor, although crew members wore flak vests, aprons, and helmets. Crew flak armor was credited with reducing crew injuries by 60% in the European theater. The bombardier will flip up his padded seat, sit down, and attach a seatbelt. Mounted in the front is a Norton bombsight. To the right is the forward, lower, and upper turret control panel. These switches turn on the air compressors that charge the gun, provide power to the computers and turrets. The control panel also powers the gun's cameras and gun safety switches. To the right is the bombardier's pedestal gun sight. The gun sight will need to be unstowed and swung out on a pentiograph arm. When in use, the gun sight will be positioned over the Norton bomb sight. All of the B-29 turrets were sighted by the General Electric Central Fire Control Systems. The gunner sighted, tracked, and fired on fighter interceptor by means of this optical pedestal gun sight. The gun sight consisted of position sensors and gyroscopes, which fed data into a vacuum tube analog computer. The computer calculated a ballistic solution. The ballistic solution accounted for lead, deflection, atmospheric characteristics, and bullet drop. Each of the machine guns fired up to 14 rounds per second. The ammo mix was 500 rounds of 100% armor-piercing incendiary cartridges for each gun. No tracers were adopted in the ammo mix to assist in aiming. Since closing speeds were fast for head-on attacks, gunners were instructed to open fire at 1,500 yards rather than the usual 900 yards as in other B-29 gun stations. To use a pedestal gun sight, the bombardier will turn on the gun sight's light and adjust the reticle's brightness. Dial in the interceptor's wingspan into the gun sight. Use the gun sight's optical head to track and range the interceptor. Press the action switch with your left hand. Frame the interceptor's wingspan with the right side range wheel. The gun sight incorporated a flip down sunshade if operating the unit on a bright day. Fire the guns with the thumb triggers. See the World War II U.S. Bomber Channel's video on the B-29 gun system for more detailed information. Also to the right of the bombardier seat is the crew member's oxygen walk-around bottle, comm system's jack box, and ashtray. The ashtray was manufactured from the Ford Motor Company's car model year 1936. On the left side is the bombardier's panel that mounts various switches, instruments, gauge clusters the bombardier will need to extract and input data. This view shows the camera intervalometer, plane flight parameter gauges, bombing intervalometer, oxygen panel, bomb group selector switches, and the heated clothes rheostat. So just how effective was the B-29 bombardier gunner's position? B-29 bombers flew in a standard 12-plane formation during daylight high-altitude missions. This April 1945 declassified document shows the position of the 12-plane B-29 formation. This chart shows the gun coverage of the group. The 12 o'clock head-on direction of the formation is protected by 21, 29, or 18 machine guns, depending on if the attack comes from the high level or low directions, respectively. Japanese fighters typically attack the B-29 bomber from the front during daylight high-altitude bombing missions. This April 1945 21st Bomber Command Declassified Intelligence Report chart shows the direction of attack during daylight missions. Of the 6,000 attacks, the majority, or 49%, came from the nose. This April 1945 Declassified Air Intelligence Report outlines a typical nose attack. This type of attack is called the 12 o'clock express. The interceptor comes in at 12 o'clock high at maximum speed. He will open fire between 500 and 1,000 yards. 
The 65-page February 1945 Declassified Operations Analysis Report outlines the combat performance of the B-29's defensive gun system. This chart documents that the B-29 bombardiers were responsible for 43 of the 175 enemy aircraft destroyed or probably destroyed. Only the top gunner claimed a higher number of kills. Since most of the daylight attacks were from the front, this chart provides a better comparison of the B-29 gun stations by normalizing the number of kills per hundred encounters. The report concludes that frontal facing gunners succeeded in destroying or probably destroying 15 out of every hundred encounters, whereas the rear facing gunners succeeded in destroying or probably destroying 30 out of every hundred encounters. In summary, the bombardier station was a well-exposed position. Japanese interceptors mostly attack from the head-on direction during daylight high-altitude missions. The B-29 bombardier's gun station was about half as effective as a tail station, where effectiveness is defined as the number of enemy aircraft destroyed, or probably destroyed, per every hundred encounter. The lower effectiveness is due to the high rate of closing speeds occurring during frontal attacks, the bombardier only having moments to align, track, frame, and fire at the enemy aircraft. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.